Before we read our anchor text, The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman, I want to go over the target skill and strategy and do some previewing of the topic. Understanding how characters' actions determine the order or sequence of events in a story can help you better understand the story. Clues like dates, time of day, and signal words can help to determine that sequence. And you can use a chart like the one below to record the events in sequence. The chart can help you describe how each event builds on earlier parts of the story. This flow chart would help you record the sequence of events in order. By using an, the information from the flow chart to describe how characters' actions contribute to the sequence and explaining that can help you understand earlier sections of the story. Our target strategy is to analyze or evaluate. As you read, pay attention to how the author chooses to tell Oliver's story. Use text evidence to analyze and evaluate whether or not you think this works well. Authors sometimes um, tell their stories by including letters written by one or more characters in the story. They might use this method to give the reader a chance to analyze and better understand the character's thoughts or feelings. When you analyze, you think deeply about a story and whether it's a good strategy to use, and it is, I'm sorry, a good strategy to use. We also evaluate when we read. We consider everything that we have um, analyzed and we come to a decision about whether or not the story works well. So you're going to use these two strategies in um, The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman. Let's turn to page 271 now and preview the topic. Sending messages. Think of all the ways that people communicate today. People send messages in many ways, including emails, letters, and postcards, and text messages. Even smiling and waving at another person are ways to communicate. Now most animals send messages to each other too. Birds call to each other. Dogs bark warnings and wag their tails to say hello. The journey of Oliver K. Woodman tells the story of how people help the strangely quiet Oliver K. Woodman send messages in interesting and amusing ways. Turn the page. On, these, on this page, you can meet the author and the illustrator, Darcy Pattison and Joe Sapita. We have that sequence of events um, flowchart here that tells the time order that events happen in the story. This genre is fantasy, okay? It's an imaginative story that could not happen in real life. All right, these are details that could not occur in real life. The journey of Oliver K. Woodman is about a wooden figure that travels across the United States. The people in the story treat Oliver as if he speaks and acts like a person, and some events could not happen in real life. As you preview, you're going to identify other features of fantasy, okay? So that's what I'd like you to do. Let's first look at the title page here. The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman. Here we can clearly see that he is a wooden figure. He's holding a sign that says California or bust. Let's read our essential question on the bottom of 273. It says, how can people communicate over long distances? We're going to keep that in mind as we read The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman. Now before, before you pause your video, I'd like you to do three things, okay? I'm going to pause it in just a second. I want you to preview the story. All right, look through pages 273, and it ends on 295. All right, so 273 to 295. You're going to preview the whole story. Look for features of fantasy as you do that. And then you're going to predict what you think the story is going to be about. Once you've done that, you're also going to use your preview and what you know about fantasy, and you're going to set a purpose for reading. Okay, so preview, predict, set your purpose for reading. Pause the video now and do those things. Now that I've had a chance to preview and predict what the story is about, I also had time to set a purpose. I think this story might be about a funny journey. 
As I look at the first few pages, I also see other characters in many letters and postcards. And I wonder how all these details fit together into a story. I'm going to read this story to see what happens, and because it's going to be fun. Why are you, why are you reading this story? What is your purpose? Pause the video now and read the selection, The Journey of Oliver K. Woodman. Starts on page 273 and ends on page 295. Come back to the video when you've finished reading. Now that you have read the story, we're going to take a few minutes and think about what you read and think through the text. I want to encourage you to please pause the video after each question and discuss your ideas with your learning adult at home. We're going to start with the first text pages. Where do Tamika and Uncle Ray live? And how do you know this? Analyze the text. Sequence of events. Who wrote the first letter? Uncle Ray or Tamika, and how can you figure this out? The illustration on page 276 shows Uncle Ray building Oliver. Explain why you think Uncle Ray built Oliver. I'm sorry, page 275 is the one that shows that. How do you think Uncle Ray's actions will contribute to the sequence of events in Oliver's journey? What have you learned about how Uncle Ray feels about Tamika, and how do you know this? What does the word beloved mean, and what clues in the text help you determine the meaning? What clues at the end of the letter on page 279 help you understand why Jackson might have dropped off Oliver when and where he did? Based on what has happened so far, what do you think will most likely happen to Oliver next? What does Cherry's letter to Uncle Ray tell you about her personality? Give some examples from the text and analyze the text. Formal and informal language. How does Cherry's letter sound different from Jackson's letter on page 279? Which words make it sound this way? Why doesn't Bobby Joe take Oliver to Florida? How is Bobby Joe's letter similar to letters from other travelers who have given Oliver a ride? Why is Uncle Ray worried about Oliver? Why do you think Tamika's mother keeps looking at family photos and saying, My baby brother! Why doesn't Uncle Ray get a letter about Oliver for a few weeks? And what clues in the text and illustrations support your answer? How does Melissa So feel about Oliver's safety? How do you know? Why did the Claremont sisters start their journey? Use first, next, and then, and last to, de to describe what has happened to them so far. Think about what you've read so far in the story. How is the story divided into parts? What role do the characters play? How is Tamika's mood in this letter different from her mood in the letter on page 285? And what details support your answer? Look at the illustration. What might the author have wanted readers to think was making everyone laugh?
Look at the map. Describe how Uncle Ray might be feeling because of what is shown in this illustration. Explain why you think so. Where is the parade for Oliver, and how do you know? Let's dig deeper. The order in which things happen in a story is called the sequence of events. Stories often have clues to help readers follow the sequence. At times, the clues are words, such as first, next, and last. In the journey of Oliver K. Woodman, the clues are the dates at the top of each letter. The chart below shows a way to keep track of the sequence of events in the story. You can use the completed chart to guide you back to parts of the story. It can also help you describe how each event builds on earlier parts in the, of the story. On the next page, you see, um, well, let's actually stick with that flow chart here a minute. It can show what happens in the beginning of the story. So to describe how certain events build on earlier events, I could use clue words to explain the sequence of events. So first, Tamika writes to Uncle Ray to ask him to visit her family this summer. Next, Uncle Ray writes Tamika to say that he can't, but he has a friend that may be able to visit. You see how I'm using those clue words as I fill out the flowchart? On page 279, formal language sounds serious and polite. The words are exact and carefully chosen. Informal language sounds more relaxed. It is how friends would talk to each other. Written language can be formal or informal. In the journey of Oliver K. Woodman, some of the letters are informal and sound like people speaking. Some examples are words like hung out, the guys, and poor fella. Other letters use more formal language, such as distinct pleasure. I am sure as you read those, you noticed some were more formal and some were more informal. Now it's your turn. I'm going to return to the essential question. With your learning adult at home, discuss how can people communicate over long distances. In your discussion, talk about your own experience as well as things from the text. Then discuss the classroom conversation questions here in the blue box. You may pause the video now to discuss those two, the essential question and the classroom conversation questions. And come back to the video when you're done. Now you're going to write about reading as a response. Think about what happens when Al Oliver scares away bears in the redwood forest. What would Oliver say if he had a voice? Write a letter from Oliver that explains how you got there and what happened when you saw the bears. Our writing tip is as you write your letter, use colorful adjectives and action verbs to describe where you are and what happens. You can write this on a clean sheet of lined paper or in your composition notebook.